Good morning, Magic 95.9. This is Mikkel, and we're talking today with Darren Atwater, Soulful Symphony conductor, composer, and director of the Soulful Symphony, celebrating their 10th anniversary. Hi, you're not in your bow tie. Darren Atwater from the Baltimore Symphony, Soulful Symphony, and we want to say hi to you. Um, you're here today because you're celebrating your 10th anniversary with the Baltimore Soulful Symphony, is that mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. I'm saying Baltimore Soulful Symphony, it's just Soulful, Soulful Symphony. Soulful Symphony. Soulful Symphony yeah. returns to the Joseph Meyerhoff, celebrating 10 years. About two or three years ago, I had a chance to see you perform live, and I was nervous because I heard about this 22-year-old gentleman okay. that was conducting the Soulful Symphony. Uh -huh. And I said, okay, symphony, it's going to be kind of... Uh, tight right and buttoned up, button up right. and I saw you come out in a tuxedo and I said yep I'm right and I was totally in awe because it was so relaxed yeah. and such a beautiful experience what makes the Soulful Symphony so much different than the BSO and the traditional way that we think of the symphony mm -hmm. well the BSO and most American symphony orchestras pull from European the European canon of Beethoven Mozart in the whole Western philosophy of music. What we've done with Soulful Symphonies, we said, let's address American music, music of our soil, blues, rock, uh, gospel, jazz, hip hop, rap. That's the music of our soil. And um, my thing is like, we're so wildly American about everything else in our culture, sports, anything you can name we're wildly American about. But classical music has kind of been in this European 18th century model. And I just wanted to pull it out of that and kind of readdress it and reconfigure it so that um, it's really really relevant to our, our modern day culture. So Darren, are you one of the youngest conductors of the symphony? Yeah, I would say I'm, I'm a young conductor. There are a lot of young conductors who conduct classical music, mm -hmm. but in terms of someone who was kind of like reconfigured an orchestra around my creative impulse, mm -hmm. I would say it's, it's a kind of a rare thing to do. So you've taken the lead on the Soulful Symphony yeah. around the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there any following your footsteps at all? Or you've set the pace and you're rolling? We've set the pace. <laughs> um, we've you know, kind of created a framework for some young folks to come behind us who are kind of looking at it and saying, oh, wow, I didn't know I could put a DJ on stage with an orchestra. I didn't know I could have a chorus. I didn't know I could have a saxophone section or a rhythm section. Mm -hmm. So it's like opening up a whole new portal for young people mm -hmm. to look at the orchestra and say, wow, this works for, mm -hmm. for my music, mm -hmm. and so how to appropriate that for this symphony. Would you consider that as a graduate of Morgan State University and under the direction of the late Nathan Carter giving back to your community when you pull in different talents and different type of DJs and instrumentalists? Ex absolutely. Um, you know, my time at Morgan was formative in terms of you know, we sang a lot with the symphony orchestra, although it was in the European model. It was great for me to just get open to that type of, um, those different colors in the orchestra. Okay. And um, giving back to the community is a way of, of us serving the community musically. And that's what Soulful Symphony does. It kind of opens up the doors of the concert hall for everybody to come in and enjoy mm -hmm. and, and feel at home and feel welcome. This will be my third year going to see the symphony, and last year I had a chance to take my niece and nephew. Mm -hmm. And um, I was kind of not sure how the young man would take it, but he was very much enjoying it. He enjoyed the atmosphere, the vibe. It's so much energy, and sometimes it's very emotional as well mm -hmm. with the instrumentation mm -hmm. and the vocals. Mm -hmm. um, how do you select some of the artists that you have performing as vocalists, performing as musicians, African-American or Latino musicians? Um, from what pool do you find them? Um, our musicians come from as far north as New York. Okay. Um, I have a drummer who has just come off the road with Maxwell, Chris Dave, um, guitarist in Indianapolis. But the core of them are here in uh, the Mid-Atlantic, Baltimore, Washington corridor. Okay. And um, musicians I've known for years, singers that I've known from school or gone to church with, or somebody <laughs> says, this person, you need to hear this person. Uh -huh. um, the orchestra members um, have all gone to the conservatory, whether it's Juilliard or Peabody or Curtis. So it's not just African American or Latino musicians up romanticizing the idea of us just being on stage, mm -hmm. which is like a novelty in America to yeah. have a black or a Latino symphony orchestra. That's always how we get tagged. <laughs> okay. But it's not just African Americans or Latinos on stage. I mean, mm -hmm. these are accomplished, very well versed in their instruments. Mm -hmm. Now, with the Soulful Symphony, how do you take that symphony? structure and that sound and combined it with Motown as the feature for this 
um, 10th anniversary that you'll be celebrating. I'm really curious about that. I can't wait to see and hear it. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it starts with really a classic. You have to have a classical foundation because you have to learn how to orchestrate okay. and arrange for the orchestra with symphonic Violins. instruments. Yeah, you got to write for every instrument, and like a hundred instruments on stage. So once you get that foundation, it's it's a being immersed in the culture of Motown or hip hop, you know, listening to it. It's the music of my generation. It's the soundtrack of my life. So what I've done is I've taken the, the classical side of it and just kind of framed it around American vernacular music. I use that term a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and it just works because I've kind of been immersed in both cultures. Now you're a composer, director, conductor of the orchestra. You're composing for a hundred instruments? Yeah, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> Uh, what are your days like? <laughs> uh, yeah, my mom used to say I hate to, to be in your head. Okay, all okay. The time. Because you're constantly <clears throat> figuring the next note, the next. Yeah, it, it's okay. like it's like watching grass grow and watching paint dry. I mean, the process oh, of composing okay. and writing that type of music it, it takes a a lot of your time. So I mean, it's like when I'm really composing, it's 18-hour days for months and, months and months and months and months and months. How long have you been working on the 10th anniversary celebration? Um. We, we started working on it about a, a year or two ago. I mean, I had it in my mind that I wanted to kind of, um, it's kind of, we've kind of smashed 10 years in the one night. Mm -hmm. So we do everything from Song of the Strange Land spirituals. We do a gospel segment. We're going to do a hip hop segment. We do Motown. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a really special piece called Evolution of the People. We have <clears throat> still photography mm -hmm. that accompanies the music. So there'll be a big screen. Uh, that you'll be looking at almost like a, a movie. I'm loving it. Yeah. Okay, now that's a little different with the still photography. Mm -hmm. thing. That's a new concept yeah. that you've added in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where does the passion and the inspiration come from for Darren Adwater? Everyday living, just okay. life and great musician and great artists who've come before me. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've, you've been handed such a rich tradition and a rich treasure of music from all genres and all trajectories of music and I'm just kind of inspired by the rich history of American culture mm -hmm. in, at large. I love it that you didn't narrow it down to just one thing but just a canvas overall. Yeah. I mean I think that yeah. makes you stronger when you relate your art to just life, everyday yeah. life. Yeah, yeah that People. makes you, uh, that makes it very visual yeah. for and, and very visual and very relatable for the audience because somebody somewhere will certainly get that picture and I do. Now what is there about Darren Atwater that's so different? When I see you on stage and I see all this instrumentation behind you and the beautiful side of you conducting, mm -hmm. um, that takes me to another place. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't hear the music, but I just see the, the art of the action. Mm -hmm. So when you're in that element, where are you in your head? I'm like the most comfortable <laughs> when we get, hit the stage for the concert. Most okay. people think, you know, you get nervous, mm -hmm. but it's like being born for something mm -hmm. in like a moment and, and that moment that two hour moment is my it's my sanctuary mm -hmm. you know when I first saw you backstage you were very humble you came out shaking hands and a lot of people are so much into what they have to do they kind of bypass all of that and you have the energy and I, I, I of of a Kirk Franklin because he was new in his genre mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. are you but when you got on stage, there was a different sight that I saw. Yeah. So um, I know we're in for a spectacular anniversary celebration. And um, the anniversary begins? Uh, Saturday, October 30th. Okay. It's this Saturday. It's I hate that it's just one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One day it's only. One day only. So we yeah, need to come and pack the house out and just, like I say, it's a community celebration. The call and response between the audience and the orchestra is just mm -hmm. something that's magical live. So you can't miss it. One day only, one show only, the 10th anniversary at the Joseph Meyerhoff Symphony Hall yep. of the Soulful Symphony. Yes. You've been doing this for 10 years? Yeah, 10 years. So, what you started when you were 12? <laughs> 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 I mean, you're, you're such a young artist at this, and I just want to thank you for contributing back to um, the world and our community and giving back the talent in such a different way because um, there's so many... Um, diverse talent such as yourself Thank you. and when you were being I, I got to ask when you were under the direction of the late Nathan Carter mm -hmm. did you foresee yourself did you see yourself doing this um, you know I didn't I was really a piano major and I was mm -hmm. really steeped in classical and the Sun came and did an article on me my freshman year and it blew everybody away and, okay. and they, they quoted Dr. Carter and they said, he said, I don't see him as a pianist, I see him as a composer and conductor. Wow. And this was wow. before I even 
thought about composing or conducting or anything, so he was clairvoyant. I mean, he saw things in me that I didn't see in myself. How so many in instruments do you play? Uh, I play trumpet. I played trumpet in middle school and elementary school, piano, organ, and then I know how to play a little bit of almost, not all the instruments, but to write for the instruments, you have to know kind of the scope and the range of most instruments. So. Wow. And you studied for four years or more? Studied at Oregon, and then I went to Peabody and studied okay. about a year. Okay. But a lot of it's self-study. Mm -hmm. We're talking about like American roots music, like jazz, uh, gospel, hip-hop. You can't go to conservatory or university and study those. That. You have to. You have to be. You have to immerse yourself in the music. A lot of listening and a lot of just playing and experience. So your touring it covers other countries. Um, are you constantly on the road? Where do you go from here? Um, not so much touring these days. Um, I've, the last ten years have been really focusing on composing for Soulful Symphony. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking to do some film music in, in LA and to expand on what we've okay. been doing here. But the main thing is to really um, take Ameri continue to take American music and define the orchestra by it. Mm -hmm. Because like I say, we've yet to do that. Mm -hmm. So I want to take country music yeah. and well, I mean, anything you can name. Go to iTunes and just scroll down. And any, any genre you pick up. Did I see bluegrass here yeah. somewhere? Yeah, <laughs> bluegrass. I mean, we, it's still available to mm -hmm. us to take that music, to take those artists, and just make great symphonies and great music and make it accessible to this generation. That's my long term. If mm -hmm. I can do that, it would be a great contribution to American culture. You are certainly a young musical genius. I want to say thank you for coming by the Magic Studios today. Is there anything you want to share with the audience before we conclude um, our well, conversation? Well, right here in Baltimore, Soulful Symphony is like, in, unlike anything on the planet, really, mm -hmm. and it's right here in our backyard. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, um, the old saying says, "There's a, the prophet is without honor in his own hometown. So right. let's support those things that belong to us and come out and support it, uh, Soulful Symphony and other things like that.